Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Death Mode playthrough episode. We are doing Raiden the Rogue using only rogue weapons. And last episode, we defeated Skeletron and the Queen Bee. And we've unlocked so many cool things like this enchanted axe and the metal monstrosity. We also got the bandit in between episodes. All I needed to do was put a platinum in my inventory. And I know that we can buy some pretty cool stuff from her. So it looks like there are three rogue weapons. So let's go ahead and buy each of these. They look pretty sweet. We'll have to try them out. The other thing I wanted to buy is the imbuing station. So that's sold from the witch doctor. The imbuing station will be really helpful for crafting fire flasks, but we need to get hellstone first. We can buy Yarm stimulants now, and these are really good. So I definitely want to get a stack of 30. What these do is boost all of your offensive and defensive stats a little bit. I also need to get the Rage and the Wrath potions. I think those will be good. Now let's take a look at the different weapons we got from the Bandit. So it looks like we have a pretty cool dagger. And then we've got this one, which is like a boomerang. Let's see if it does anything interesting. Oh, it kind of pierces through enemies. Pretty sweet. And I just realized that this right here can stack three times. So let's go ahead and buy three of them. And it can pierce infinitely, it says. Interesting. That's very powerful. And you can shoot three of them very much like the light discs. And then we've got Kylie, which is another boomerang. And this one seems pretty powerful as well. Just really high base damage. And it's not even rolled to Unreal yet. Since we fought the Desert Scourge so many times last episode, we actually have a lot of gold. So I'm going to go ahead and reroll these to Unreal. And then we can try testing them out. So we've got the improved dummy and let's check the DPS. Oh my goodness. This one's doing 600 DPS. This is really powerful. Let's try the glaive out and see how it does. It's doing about 400. I think this really excels when you're doing like an invasion or something and you have tons of enemies in a row. And let's see what Kylie does. About 300. So this might be our best weapon. Man, it does so much damage. It like pierces a little bit and hits the enemy multiple times and it shoots really quickly. Now I think it's time to head over to the abyss and start exploring it and see what we can find. But before we do that, we definitely need to put on some of our gear. We've got a few items that will come in handy. Well, I think this is a pretty good combination of accessories, including our armor, which is also providing us buffs. Here we are at the sulfurous sea and the tunnel down into the abyss is right below us. So one thing I want to do is put down this Effigy of Decay, and that will help remove the uh, Sulfurous debuff, the Acid. But you can see we hardly are taking any damage from it right now. But let's go ahead and put it maybe like right here. And then you can see we completely remove that debuff effect. So we may want to put another one of these down a little bit deeper. And that way we just don't get hurt by the Acid. So now we're getting the Sulfur Poisoning again. But we've got a lot of really good items on, so I think we're going to be just fine. And the Sulfurous Poison gets removed once you enter the Abyss. And I've got this weapon right here that shoots through walls, which is very helpful in the Abyss. We got the Herring Staff, which is a summon from our first chest. And yeah, let's just keep exploring and see what we can get. Already two chests. The Torrential Tear, I love that it's so good because it helps you um, not have to wait through the rain when the rain starts. You can just end it immediately. We're doing pretty well down here. This is actually the best I've ever done in the Abyss. We've just got so much good gear and we just got a Depth Charm. Pretty good. That's part of the Abyssal Diving Suit later on. This is a really good Abyss. There's just so much stuff really close by. And we got the Plating. Whoa, we have an Orifish. The thing is so big. Oh, and we have Iron Boots already. My goodness. We're finding so many different things. So one thing I didn't realize is you can actually harvest the planty mush. I didn't realize you could do that this early in the game. I'm not sure what I can craft with it though. 
Whoa, that squid was going crazy. Well, we've got one more chest. We got a melee weapon. And unfortunately, I think we've reached the point where we can't go any farther. I don't know if this is just the spawn or if this is how it's intended to be. But yeah, we're completely walled in here. And I don't think we can break this gravel. So we can't actually get the lionfish. It's probably in one of the chests below us. That's a rogue weapon you can get from the abyss. Let me know if this is normal. If it's not normal, I'll probably bring like Magnus in or something and just mine a pathway so we can go deeper into the abyss next episode or something. Fortunately though, we did actually get a lot of cool stuff. We have the plating, the depth charm, and the iron boots. Now that we sorted through our inventory and we finished in the abyss, it's time to head down to the underworld and we finally have an obsidian potion. So we're good to go. We're not gonna die from the heat down there. So let's go ahead and look for a shadow chest. I don't actually know if there's anything for a rogue or anything, but it could be cool to find a few of those. And of course, we're gonna pick up all the hellstone we can get. Man, we're finding so many gold portals down here. And even with obsidian skin in death mode, you actually can't just stand in the lava the whole time you have the potion active. You just get this effect. So it's definitely a lot harder to get hellstone, but it's still pretty simple. I think the rogue weapons dropped from the fire imps. So we'll definitely want to kill any of those that we see. Although I have a feeling that with the enchanted axe and some of the other weapons we've got right now, we have far outclassed it. So we probably don't really need to get it. So here is our first shadow chest. And let's see what we got. A hellwing bow. Sweet. And a bunch of potions. Well, we've got two obsidian chests in this house right here. So let's take a look. The fire flower. And another fire flower. Well, I think that's probably enough exploring in the underworld. We've gone about halfway across the side of the map. And we've only found a few chests. We found three and really nothing that useful for a rogue, I don't think. But the main thing is we've got a ton of hellstone. So we should be good to craft all the hellstone stuff that we need. The only other thing I need to do is get a bunch of obsidian. So I've mined to a little pond right here. And now we can go see if this can be kind of channeled to some lava. So I think we've managed to make some obsidian down here. Yeah, right here. Perfect. There's so much lava down here. This will be so easy to get obsidian. And after this, we should have way more than enough obsidian. In fact, this is like an obsidian generator right here. That just got us 337 obsidian. So I think we are good to go. So this is actually really interesting. The bandit isn't wearing a hat right now. And I think it's because it's a party and all the NPCs have little party hats on. And I guess she just takes her hat off. But I've never seen her look like this. This is kind of cool. So now let's do a few things. Let's craft fire flasks. And that's just with bottled water and normal hellstone. We can craft those. So let's craft 30. Excellent. And then let's go ahead and see what we can do with hellstone. So it actually looks like we can craft two rogue weapons with all this hellstone. We can craft this blazing star, but that's not until hard mode and we need Essence of Chaos, but that looks actually pretty powerful. And then we can craft the Infernal Chris, and that just requires Hellstone and Obsidian. First, we can craft our Molten Pickaxe. That's a good upgrade from what we've got right now. And now we can craft the Infernal Chris. So let's just craft a thousand of those, and that way we can have unlimited. Okay, so it's doing like 250 damage. So it seems to be about as strong as the Feather Knives. So it's, it looks pretty cool. We'll hang on to it. Now the next thing we can do is fight the slime god. So to do that, we just need to craft this overloaded sludge. And that's pretty simple. We can actually craft quite a few of those. 
So I think we are pretty ready for this fight. I'm gonna go ahead and use this dagger. I think it's really powerful and I like that it's got a lot more distance. And you can see the fire flask effect on it is pretty sweet. The first thing I'm gonna do is throw some sky stabbers across the arena a little bit. And then we can summon the boss. This is a really challenging boss, so we gotta be quite careful. We might need a bigger arena, actually. But most of this is just all about dodging, especially those orbs that it summons. They have a similar AI to the corruption in crimson chests, where they get above you and then like fall down on you. And then they have lots of guys that they summon, and the little yin yang thing in the middle actually does like a debuff where you can't change your elevation. You can only move left and right. Although I just realized I don't have any knockback resistance, which probably isn't ideal. Okay, let's throw some sky stabbers out. Uh oh. Yeah, we're taking too many hits here. Yeah, that thing is really aggressive. Oh my gosh, we're taking so many hits. We gotta be more careful here. Okay, we're 30 seconds off a of heal. Twenty-two seconds from a heal. Three seconds. Okay, that's good. We got a heal going. Now we just need to keep on surviving. Oh no, this is not a good place to be. Now we just have this slime god orb. And it's going kind of crazy at us. Oh no. I think they may have redone the AI for this middle section because it seems to be doing a lot more attacks and it's a lot more menacing. Maybe I'll try using some of these because I think they home in a little bit. We can't even move. We're completely stun locked. Okay, we gotta get away from this guy. Man, it's so hard to hit it. This new AI is very difficult. We gotta be very careful about dodges. And let's throw some of these down. Maybe let's try our enchanted axe. I'm definitely struggling on this boss. I'm not used to the new attacks and stuff. It's definitely about getting consistent damage, which I'm struggling to do. But we are finishing him off, I think. 16 seconds still a heal as well. Okay, so it seems like it does like a circle or something. And then it charges, shoots out those orbs during the circle phase. There we go, we got it first try. That was so sloppy, but still we did defeat it. One of the most important things is during the first part of the fight when the slimes are jumping at you is to not get kind of stuck between the two of them because very quickly they can kill you. And I've had that happen before. But fortunately, I was able to kind of maneuver because we've got a lot of height to this arena. 
and that was kind of the thing that saved us. We made lots of mistakes, but we kind of spaced them out far enough to where we were able to survive. And we got three Nazars during that fight. Very cool. And let's see what we got from the treasure bag. We have purified gel. That's kind of the main thing we need. And then we've got the electrolyte gel pack, which permanently makes adrenaline takes 10 less seconds to charge. That's actually really good. And then purified jam. That's a super powerful consumable. And yeah, that's pretty much everything we got here. It looks like the bandit NPC sells gel darts now. Buying gel darts is actually really not that expensive. So now that we've got purified gel, we can craft the stata gel armor. It only requires six. That's actually pretty cheap. And then we've got the armor. We might actually be able to upgrade to stata gel just from one fight. Yes, now we've got full stata gel. So let's see what the difference is. We've got 53 defense and our main weapon is 91 rogue damage. And we went up to 59 and our damage changed to 90. So we lost just a little bit of damage, but we gained a decent amount of defense. The set bonus says when you take over 100 damage in one hit, you become immune to damage for an extended period of time. That's really good. And then it says grants an extra jump and increases jump height. I think that's probably better than our sulfurous armor at this point. Whoa, it definitely seems like we can jump quite a bit higher. And we just got the slime god lore. And that makes us slide around. It's quite jarring. So that fight was a bit sloppy. I kind of want to try it again and this time see if we can do a little bit better. I think I'm kind of warmed up now. Plus we got stata gel armor. Oh, we also have the gel darts. So let's see how those do. They seem pretty powerful. Yeah, this is pretty good. It's weird when we get close to our base, the music changes. That was close. We're dodging a little bit better this time, though. I don't really know if this is better than what we were using before. Man, these dashes are so crucial in this fight. But I like that it's a new weapon, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. Oh, we should definitely throw down our Sky Stabber. And we can use our Adrenaline. Yes, we actually got Adrenaline. Much better than the first fight. I've noticed that it really helps with the Slime God, the center part, to just dash at like the very last second because it kind of confuses it, I think. And it helps evade a little bit better. Okay. We took a few hits there, but not... Too bad. The main thing is making sure that you watch out for these orbs all over the arena, because those are what do a ton of damage. And while you're stunned by the centerpiece, you can actually still jump around with your hook, and that helps dodge some attacks that you might get hit by. Okay, so now... Let's see if we can think of a better way to do this. Kylie's actually doing much better, I think. I think I'll stick with this one. It's such a big projectile that it has a better chance of hitting. And you can kind of throw a bunch of these out into the arena and do some pretty good damage. Yeah, this is definitely working a lot better than the other ones. The centerpiece puts so many of those orbs all over the place. That was so much better. I don't even think we used a healing potion that whole fight. We got a summon, more purified gel. Oh, we have vitamins as well. That'll be good for the Ankh shield later on. Now we've defeated the slime god. We've got stata gel armor. We've got tons of amazing weapons. I think at this point, we're pretty much good to go for the wall of flesh. Although, of course, we do not have an arena for it. 
So I think between episodes, I'll go ahead and build a good space to fight the Wall of Flesh. And then that means next episode, we'll be able to start off right away fighting the Wall of Flesh and then we will start hard mode, which is always really exciting. I hope you all have been enjoying this series. It's been so much fun. So definitely subscribe if you want to catch the next episodes and drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.